Hey everyone, it's Night Force, and now it's time for your night with night. This time we're gonna go dive into the uh, realm of weapons that use ammunition, whether it be magic points, arrows, musket balls, or even themselves. So if if you can run out of ammo, this is your little guide for you. So the first thing we're going to go into is the wooden bow. This is the standard weapon that you will be getting if you actually really want to craft it. It takes 10 wood and has 5 damage and very slow speed. And we just let off an arrow. Go get that back. I am a cheap bastard. But yeah, it's pretty decent speed, believe it or not, for what it is capable. It can fire up to wooden arrows, unholy arrows, and jester arrows. And we're going to go ahead and jump to the arrows here before we go any further. Wooden arrows you can craft with wood and stone. Get, I don't know the exact recipe, I'm not even going to bother looking at that because it's just easy to make. It's almost dumbfoundingly easy. Wooden arrows, easy to make. Make flame arrows, you need torches along with the arrows and you can make flame arrows. Although, sometimes when you fire those, you'll get regular arrows back. They're useful for lighting up a couple things, and they do a little more damage, but I think overall it's not really that worth it. Until you get something special in the future. Unholy arrows, you need worms, teeth, and arrows, I think. Or you just make it straight from wood and worms, teeth. But you make unholy arrows, which is very suggested. They can rip through enemies, they have good high damage, and you can craft as many as you need. The next one is the most damaging arrow, the Jester's Arrow. You can only get these in chests, you cannot craft them, and uh, they rip, they go straight through enemies as well, they don't just bounce off of it and hit the ground, unlike the wooden arrows and the flame arrows, because once those things hit one target, they stop. Demon arrows, as far as I've been told, and Jester arrows rip through them, but the Jester arrow disappears once fired. There is no return once you fire it. So your ammo is really limited to 250 compared to, oh, the unholy arrow, you could fire six of them and get almost five back. So the unholy arrow is actually the suggested weapon that I would, suggested ammunition for your uh, bows. So now that we've gone through these actual four, because there's a uh, flame arrows out there. So now that we've gone through those, we can now jump to the next one. Copper bow. I myself, I'm, I don't use bows that often, so I'll be honest with you, I really don't have a good feel for it. But you go from 5 to 8 to 9 to 10, I have the feeling that you're going to stick with a copper bow for a little bit before you can actually make the jump to a, you know, better bow, because they're all slow speed. Okay, so once you get with the copper bow, it's not really worth a jump you know worth an upgrade each level just to get one damage more now also keep in mind when you see eight damage you add that along with the damage that the arrows give so eight damage eight damage that's 16 damage that's already good enough to compete with uh, the the uh, um, lights bane sword and it's also range so you can keep enemies away but you can run out of ammo which then means you're screwed so I suggest that once you get the copper bow, don't really use your materials to make the other three bows because they're still also slow speed and you only get one damage more per upgrade you go up. So it's still going to have this kind of fire rate. Oh, see, I just lost that arrow. So once you get up here to the this one, you actually make a good upgrade once you get to the demon bow. The demon bow is an actual two points more damage compared to the gold bow, and it switches up to an average speed, equaling up to a little bit of a faster firing. So it makes it a little worth it and enables you to juggle a couple more enemies, but still. Uh, it's decent. I would say that. The demon bow is decent. You can handle a good bit of stuff. You'll be depending on it for a little bit. 
for your arrow aiming for as for arrow ammunition but definitely the one that I suggest and is also the most powerful bow in the game is the molten fury oh let's go back and jump over here tin wood the copper to the gold bows I'll take eight of the respective bows so eight copper bars eight iron bars eight silver bars eight gold bars when you get to the demon bow it is eight bars the molten fury takes 25 hellstone bars but the cool thing about this is not only does it keep its average speed and the massive massive 16 more damage added on to whatever arrow you use it also lights your arrows into flame arrows now I'm not sure if the flame if your arrows become flame arrows but every now and again you'll get one back as whoops as a whoa wrong one back to the molten fury oh you broke it lights them up Let's see if we can yeah so that one didn't come back as regular that one came back as a flame arrow now I'm not sure if when you fire it it's a flame arrow if it uses flame arrow damage which as we can see here it's seven damage compared to the five but it's definitely useful when lighting up stuff and the damage that this thing can pummel out makes it well 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 worth investing in it's a lot of a lot of hellstone bars you gotta get for it but the damage for it is insane and it is awesome to use against bosses Especially for Jester arrows, although you won't be getting those back, it will rip through Eater of Worlds like nobody's business. Uh, hmm. Excuse me. Now that we're done with the bows, we can now jump into the weapons that use either musket balls, which can be purchased from the merchant, or meteor shot, which you can use, which you can make from uh, iron, uh, meteor bars at an anvil. And you'll get a hundred of them per bar, so it, it meteor. Uh, meteor, meteor shot is very very cheap to make considering and on top of that they can ricochet off in dungeons unlike the musket balls and they also have a little more damage as you can see meteor shot is also useful for finding floating islands so you can go out there shoot up in the sky wait a couple of seconds if it doesn't come back move several more feet and when I mean feet like probably oh almost a whole screen Fire another shot in the air, maybe two screens. You can find floating islands like that. It's very useful. Well, we're going to go with the first weapon, which... Whoa! We actually have a guest. <laughs> this is a uh, uh, Alvaron. This is actually her first time here, but she was gonna be here with Tofu. So, the first and the weakest of the uh, um, um, ammunition that uses musket balls and meteor shot is the flintlock pistol. You can get those, uh, let's see, I think, uh, yeah, flintlock, um, arms dealer. You can get them from the arms dealer for about uh, five gold. And they fire at a very decent speed. You can juggle, and they go right through enemies, so you can hit multiple in one shot. And they'll bounce them back at a fair distance to keep your distance away from them. We've got to speed up this timer. Um, cause we got a lot. Uh, Flint lot. It's decent. I'd say it's kind of worth it for the moment, especially since you're going to need it later on. 
Hint, hint. And, uh... For 7 damage, added on to 7 damage, that's 14 damage. That's... Oh, let's see. For a regular arrow, that's... That's an iron bow right there. So... It's a good get right from the bar, right from the start, but chances are when you have the flintlock pistol, that means your arms dealer's there, which means chances are you have a, either a handgun or a musket. Let's go ahead and jump to the handgun because it's the next most powerful weapon that uses uh, musket balls or meteorite shot. Uh, handgun fires very, very fast and does 12 damage, which is almost doubled than the uh, flintlock. Therefore making the flintlock not so necessary with a little question mark over my head. So if you get a handgun, which when you get a handgun, uh, let's see, where can you get it? Where can you get it? I'm running through my head. You can get it in a chest in the dungeon and I do believe I've heard of it being in just random world caves. So you can go search and find a cave randomly underground. It could be one directly underneath me for all we know. And it could be in a chest there. So if you find one of these, you're going to get a merchant. You'll be able to buy your uh, ammunition. Now, chances are, most of you, when you get the merchant, the weapon that you've gotten the merchant through would be the musket. It's a slow, very, very slow firing weapon with 14 damage, which is a good bit of damage. Although not much more than the handgun. It, but it fires at a slower rate. As you can see, it's a little slower. Almost too slow. It's good to get the merchant. It's good if you really want to use that, but the flintlock pistol really... Oops. You can pump out two shots in the time it takes you to do the musket, and you can juggle a couple more enemies with two shots than you can with one shot. Making the musket not so much useful making the flintlock, you know, not that bad, but you still, if you want to get your hands on a kind of weapon, you want the handgun. So we're going to jump from the musket, which can only be found in, which can only be found in shadow orbs or an underground chest, once again. Now the next weapon we're going to go jump into, is, let's bring it up here, is the mini shark, which you can buy from the arms dealer for 50 gold. Now this weapon, very worth it. In fact, you will tear some shit up. Bosses fear this weapon. It is by far the, you know, without any assistance, the fastest firing weapon in the game and can deal out massive amounts of damage. Some people sit there and think, ah, oh, is it really worth it? Is it really worth it? Yes. It's five damage, so it really eats up your ammunition, but the damage per second it can pump out is insane. Get a load of this. Ah oh, yeah, ah oh, yeah. It's very fast. It eats up your ammo, but considering uh the the rate of fire, it just makes it's almost a waste to use it on mobs. It's almost like it's specifically built for bosses. So it's 50 gold coins at the arms dealer. Now I've heard of it. But I've never seen it, but I heard it is extremely rare to find it in a shadow orb and extremely rare to find it in random chests. I don't think that's true, but it's what I've heard, and I'm just going to go ahead and say it in case you guys find it. Anyone sees it or gets it from a shadow orb or a chest, let me know, because that's, that's kind of up in the air for me. So, and up from the mini shark... We have my preferred weapon, the Phoenix Blaster. The Phoenix. Someone like to hide in that house, don't they? The Phoenix Blaster uh, is a handgun and 20 Hellstone bars and 26 damage. A massive jump from everything else, just like the Hellstone or the Molten Fury from the weapons of its previous. Anything with Hellstone is a lot better. Oh, you left. So the Phoenix Blaster is definitely a good upgrade. Shoots fairly fast. Fairly, fairly, as it says right there. Very fast speed. It's just like the handgun, but it does more damage, and it go the bullet flies 
faster and does more damage and farther, making a Phoenix Blaster a good investment. I'd suggest you use it. It makes your uh, uh, musket balls and your meteor shot both very much so worth their uh, weight in damage. And just, if I get musket balls or meteor shot, if I'm going against the boss, yeah, I'll use a mini shark. But if it comes down to it, a phoenix blaster will do. It, it'll rip through enemies as well. So now that we're done with the handguns and shit, so that's in the end of the bows, that's the end of the handguns, the end of this and this and the end of that. Let's jump into the weapons that use... Oh, we forgot something. Ah. Good old, good old owie time. Flip them all out. I do believe that's everything. Oh. No. Nope. We're going to go ahead and jump into this one. The next one that uses actual ammunition is the Star Cannon. Star Cannon just is used by, uh, is made by using one mini shark. Five fallen stars and 20 meteor bars. It fires really fast. And do you see that damage? Do you see that damage? It is very fast speed with 75 damage. This is a boss's nightmare. This is something that could take down uh, Skeletron quick. Uh, granted, he, he doesn't kill you first. Uh, the one drawback of it is it fires fallen stars. And, you know, Fallen Stars aren't exactly something that you just buy. So your ammo is very limited with it, and when you fire a Fallen Star, it used to be that the Fallen Star would land on the ground, and you could pick it back up if it was night. They fixed that very quickly for balancing issues, and now you don't get it back. But that's 75 damage right there. See how fast that is? That just rapes bad guys. Especially bosses. So, now that we got that out of the way, let's jump up into these things. So now we've gone through all the ammunition. Have we gone through the seat? We know where that come from. Handgun. I'm jumping around everywhere here. Sorry, guys. This is like 2 o'clock in the morning. The, uh, let's see. Handgun. Chests and dungeons made from one thing. Uh, very... Yeah, I think we've pretty much covered all of that. So the next thing we're going to go through is the sh uh, shootikin. Shootikins are very common in chests, and you can buy them from um, the merchant. You can throw them. They are very much so affected by gravity. And they do about 10 damage, and you can throw them fairly fast. They go through opponents, so that you can throw them, hit something, and that thing's barely going to budge. It's still going to creep up towards you. So it's not actually a good defensive weapon, but if you could throw it just right at, let's oh, let's say the Cthulhu, you can hit him and then hit him again as it's on its way down. So it's it can it could rack up damage if used right, and the ability to pick it back up and throw it most of the time makes it a good reusable weapon. Now the next weapon we're gonna jump to is a spiky ball. Spiky balls you get from Goblin Invasions. The cool thing about spiky balls. You could throw it. They don't have very far range, but they roll, and they keep rolling. And as you can see, that one down there stopped. Now let's say I'm a goblin or something, and I walk down there. Ow! Those things, even when they're sitting on the ground, hurt. So you can throw and hit something, and when they roll on the ground, things still can't touch them. You can make actual, very good, useful traps. They can hit it and then bounce back, and then hit it and then bounce back, and then hit it and then bounce back, and they'll sit there for a little while. You can't pick them back up, sadly. That's why I'm not heaving them everywhere. Um, once again, only goblin invasions. They're good for traps. Something they're really useful against is something that's, oh, let's say, it creeps across the ground like uh, Eater of Worlds. Granted, the damage they do to them isn't that great, but something like Skeletron, these things will eat his hands up. He will not have hands very fast with spiky balls on the ground. They'll continue to do damage as he's trying to swipe at you and swing at you. He'll do nothing but hurt himself. So, Spiky Balls is something good for, against Skeletron. It's useful. Lay him out if you can, and then summon him. Awesome. So, in combination, so yeah, they just disappeared. 
combination with oh let's say a phoenix blaster or a mini shark it'll be he'll be history fast the next weapon a vile thorn or the villet horn whatever you want to call it i don't know i can't really pronounce it that well it's a it uses magic it's mp it absorbs five mana per cast it's very short range. You cannot hit things with the actual staff. Only it's, you know, beam that you see that shoots out. And you can only get it from shadow orbs. Now here's the thing. When you throw it, when it goes out in the distance, and it sits there, it can actually hit an opponent twice. So using it against, oh, let's say, oh, and also, it goes through uh, the ground too. So let's say like Chet, uh, like imps or skeleton casters, or um, spell casting goblins. This is their bane. This hurts them pretty well. When it hits them, it hits them twice, and the damage it does, it's kind of worth it. It changes our. It could. I'm not sure. I haven't actually tried using it against them. It could kill them very quick. Wait, three mana. <gasps> it last time it was five mana. Oh snap, they updated it. Looky there, three mana. Shit. Oh look, seven mana. Is that what it used to be? Uh, no, it was ten mana. Oh my gosh, everything everything went down. Cool. So, this is useful for killing spellcasters. Um, Eater of Worlds, it can multiple damage him. Another thing, jumping back onto another thing. Star Cannon, when it hits something, it goes through. I've heard of someone wasting the Eater of Worlds in 15 seconds with this cannon. So it's it it hurts a lot. Uh but Vilethorn, also the same thing, it just sits there and hurts, and with Eater of Worlds, you'll hit it like three to four times when you use it, and with every single segment going through there, especially if you get it just in the right way, you'll damage the whole worm in just seconds. Making the Vilethorn very common, but very useful. Definitely worth keeping around. The next thing we're bringing up is the Fire Flower. Fire. Mario fans are now jumping up and down, but the Fire Flower is very common to be found by Fire Imps and Bone Serpents, and it summons a whole bunch of little fireballs that bounce around for a good period of time. Um, it does 33 damage, slow speed, but not really that slow of speed. The seven mana it uses definitely now makes it worth keeping around, especially when you, we, especially when you have all the mana to spare and the however much mana it eats and however much you can keep casting, it can stack up and cover a whole cavern easily. So caving or going through a dungeon, this thing can be very useful. However, chances of you going through a cave what, with this weapon is very slim because you often use your dungeon to get to the Hell World, which is where you can attain which you, where you can obtain this weapon. Now we're going to jump to the next mana using weapons: the Magic Missile. Haha, D and D, I found my ma Magic Missile at the sky. This is a very unique weapon. Magic Missile. Um, let's see uses 13 mana. Wow, it used to use uh, 18. You can obtain it in a dungeon chest, not an underground thing, but your actual dungeon chest, or you can break the books that are on the shelves and have a very rare chance that you can have this come up out of the books. But it's basically a little missile that you control with your mouse. You can walk around yourself and do whatever, but wherever your mouse points, so does the missile. So you can guide it around, tell it to go through in here and up and around and down through there and break some stuff and then come back up and then hit the ground and blow up a flower because I'm a meanie like that. It's a very easy guide around weapon. It hits once. So once you hit an opponent, you've got to cast another one and then hit him. Cast another and then hit it. Cast another and then hit him. It's a good weapon. Uses it does 32 damage, and it's useful. And you can also explore caves, knock down webs, such stuff like that. It can multiple multiple hit grass, webs. It can go through water. It's useful for lighting up a couple of caverns and such. 
but the it's better one is the Flame Lash. Flame Lash is a you know, kind of, kind of semi-rare drop. Not even a semi-rare drop. It's actually a rare drop. Um, 15 mana. Gosh, it used to be a uh, 20 mana. Um, Flame Lash. I carry it around with me. It's useful. It hits twice, so I can bit bit on a, a zombie. It can single-handedly in one cast kill a zombie or a demon eye. I use it quite often. It lets out little sparks that fall so that you can just cast it once and then just kind of shake it side to side and you can actually look into the uh, ground below very easily using the uh, light. It's a very useful weapon. It can hit twice. It does a crap ton of damage. It uses only two mana more, but does a good hefty nine damage more. Fast speed, which both of them are, and it's it's just better. I prefer to use it. I carry it with me all the time. Um, I'd highly suggest you use it. And the next thing we're going to jump into is the bone. Yay, I got a bone. <laughs> Yay. Um, it's just like the bow and arrow. You have a chance of getting it back. You get it from any of the dungeon um, angry bones. So if you see an angry bone, kill him. Chances are he'll drop that. You can grab it. Come on. You can also use this to craft the necro armor. And believe it or not, it does pretty good damage for its fast speed. And uh, it's not actually really good as a weapon, but it's good enough. You can deal out a good hefty amount of uh, uh, damage per second with it, but there's better. There is better. And, uh, that's it for that thing. Next thing we're going to jump into, I'm just kind of flailing around everywhere here. And this is a long guide, sorry. Next thing we're jumping into is the Space Gun. The Space Gun uh, uses, it was 9 mana, what is it now? 6 mana. Sweet. Um, six mana. You can hold it down to keep firing. It uses up your mana. As you can see over there on the side. Now, from what I heard, if you're wearing a, uh, um, meteor suit, the mana cost for this gun is zero. So, I actually haven't tested that out yet. So, we'll probably do that later. When we're doing an armor guide. But the fires decently fast. It will eat up your, um mana though after a period of time but from the looks of it now it'll go a lot longer now that the cost is down it does 14 damage so it's not exactly the most damaging of the range weapons that that eat up some source of ammo but it's just it's cool especially if you have the uh, meteor suit and the meteor suit actually works in the way I'm thinking it is then it makes it really worth it so we're gonna go ahead and jump from that I don't use it myself I still use the flame lash now we're going to jump to the next thing, the Aqua Scepter. Sprays and shoots out water, uses 9 mana. Uh, the previous version, it uh, used 12 mana. And you can find these in a dungeon. Did I already say what that was made out of? No, I didn't, actually. Uh, the Space Gun, it's crafted out of 30 meteors, 10 fallen stars, and 1 flintlock pistol, which is pretty much a good way to recycle your old flintlock pistol, so don't sell it. Um, so, there's your space gun right there. Aqua Scepter. Slow speed, 15 damage. You can kind of jettison out there. I'm not even sure if it actually uncovers... Yeah, it uncovers darkness, but not so much so brightly. And you can see it's over there just kind of eaten some of the mana. Not too badly, but for the damage it deals out, it's a decent one. You can juggle a whole mass of enemies with it, making it very, very useful, because you can just flood them, basically. And you can only get it in the dungeon, and even though it says it sprays out a shower of water, it is not actual water. You can't turn lava into obsidian, you can't fill in a little bucket or anything. It's just, uh, basically, just imagine it like a flamethrower. There you go. 
Next thing we're going to jump onto is the water bolt, which I think is the last thing we're covering here. Indeed we are. The water bolts. 15 damage, fast speed, uses 15 mana. What was it before? Shit. I think it was 20. You can find it on dungeon bookshelves. And that's actually quick, uh, quick casting there. I rarely use it myself, but it can bounce around a lot in a dungeon and cause lots of havoc. You just pew, 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 all oh, amount of mana. Bounces around a whole lot and does pretty decent damage, especially when it can multi-hit, making it worth it and useful inside of a dungeon. I just don't use it a whole lot myself, so that's that's my opinion. So out of all these ranged weapons, the ones I suggest is the Flame Lash and the Phoenix Blaster and the uh, Molten Fury. Those are my select choices, although I do carry around a Star Cannon, and just in case I feel a little wild. Uh, the Vilethorn, take it with you down to the uh, Hell World, it'll help you with the Fire Imps. It goes through walls, very useful. Spiky balls, a boss is or the the skeletron. It, he's not gonna be happy when he sees you throwing those things around, and he's thinking, "Crap, he's setting me up." Shurikens, good for a beginning, not for an in-game kind of weapon. You're not gonna want to depend on those. Mini shark, useful. It is worth it. It may eat up your ammo, but the damage you can deal out can take care of any foe. You just gotta live long enough. Uh, I think that pretty much covers it. Yeah. Well, this is Night Force, and this is your midnight cramming. Or for me, it's 232 cramming. And the next thing we'll be doing is the uh, weapons that use no ammunition, making them very, very worthwhile. So we'll get around to that and then we'll do probably also may might as well do a armor review at the same time for that one. So this one's gone long enough. If you went through this whole video, good God. If you see anything here or if you've discovered any weapons in another place that I have not mentioned, please leave a comment down below. I'll put a little comment bubble or a little comment thing up here with credits to you if you prove it. And, uh, well, you guys get to have fun with these weapons. Y'all take care. Later.